Welcome Braintree residents. As we approach the one year anniversary of the day our community was drastically changed by the coronavirus, it is appropriate for us to take a moment and reflect on all we have accomplished together during this time and how we can continue our town's success moving forward. I began 2020 as mayor of a community that I have been thankful to call my home for my entire life. With priorities in place based on many conversations I had with residents about their hopes and goals for the future of our town. I knew we needed to address the infrastructure needs of our town and school facilities and develop a comprehensive master plan that would serve as a blueprint for our future development, all while continuing to provide our residents with the level of services they have rightfully grown to expect from all of our town departments. With a plan in place to implement these priorities, my staff and I were prepared to immediately get to work and along with our community, make Braintree better together. Nobody could have expected that on March 12, 2020, we would learn that a fatal and highly contagious virus would change everything from that day forward. We were faced with a series of difficult decisions. From closing our schools, not knowing our students would spend the remainder of the school year learning from home, reducing the number of staff working in our town offices while still providing much needed services, modifying local businesses, operation hours, and ultimately creating a local state of emergency in an effort to stop the spread of COVID-19 and protect our community. We heard it several times throughout the last year. I often use these words myself when describing coronavirus. Fluid, ever-changing, unpredictable. But when I look back on the year, there's one thing that was just the opposite. Our community's resilience and our dedication to each other, especially in our greatest time of need. The impact of the pandemic was felt by all. Whether you had to adapt to working from home, sometimes while overseeing your children's education, you may have lost your job or your business may have been shuttered. In the worst of cases, had suffered the loss of a loved one due to the virus. Despite all the loss we endured, we kept moving forward through these unprecedented times and joined together as residents, as neighbors, as friends, and most importantly, as community. I would like to take this moment to recognize three members of our community who passed away this year, Nelson Chen, Laurie Melchionda, and Bill Verasso. Nelson proudly served as the town's Parks and Recreation Director, where he was able to touch the lives of so many through his service to our community. Whether you were meeting Nelson for the first time or you had known him for many years, you will always remember his smile and kindness to all. Laurie served as a nurse with the Braintree Public Schools from 1997 to June of 2018, when she left to become the Director of Nursing in Weston. And as a beloved member of the Board of Health since October of 2016, Laurie was a positive influence to so many in our community and dedicated her life to helping others. Her kindness and, and compassion is sorely missed by all in our community. Bill Verasso was a true American hero. He served his country in the U.S. Navy and was a World War II veteran. 
He served our community on the Braintree Police Department and was a kind and compassionate police officer to all, to all he encountered, especially the thousands of children he taught safety and respect to over the many years, myself included. Nelson, Laurie, and Bill, your actions made our town a better place to live and your legacies will have a lasting impact on our community forever. While we were adapting to the new normal with mass closings of restaurants, offices, recreational facilities, and businesses of all types, local services continued. A community in and of ourselves. Town employees continue to serve our residents and provide services in new ways in order to adapt to the limitations imposed by COVID-19. We utilized our drop boxes at Town Hall and 85 Quincy Avenue for more than just collecting taxes, affording residents a safe place for obtaining services. We used our outdoor spaces for socially distanced services, including our annuals rabies clinic, the flu clinic, and the trash sticker pickup. Our municipal licenses and inspections department, tax collector's office, and town clerk began offering more services online. The Thayer Public Library provided access to curbside pickup and virtual events. The Department of Elder Affairs continued its outreach, this year adding virtual programming direct to our seniors' homes. As many things changed throughout the year, one constant that remained was my commitment to providing a high level of municipal service to our community and our staff did just that. Another example of our strength as a community can be found in the Braintree Community Task Force. Created to facilitate distribution of all available resources to aid residents in need because of COVID-19. In collaboration with the Braintree Emergency Management Agency, the task force held weekly food drives to assist the Marge Crispin Center in providing support for those on their growing client list. In a time when everyone was struggling, I remain in awe of the generosity our community showed and continues to show by donating food, supplies, and money to those in need. My thanks and deep appreciation goes out to all the dedicated volunteers at the March Crispin Center for all the time spent sorting, packaging, and delivering food to residents in need and for their invaluable service to our community. Collectively, we have had over 35 coronaviruses in Braintree, 3,500 coronaviruses in Braintree. We saw positive cases in our long-term care, assisted living and nursing home facilities, while at the same time combating the spread within our community. Following a year of coming together by staying apart, we began 2021 with increased knowledge about how to stop the spread and increasing access to the vaccine, all of which support our community efforts to flatten the curve and decrease our positive test rate. Relying on decades of flu clinics held by the health department, we were able to immediately join the vaccination efforts by hosting local clinics first for our first responders and eventually for our seniors. To date, we have administered over 1,500 first doses of the vaccine as part of our local clinics 
and partner with Brewster Ambulance and continue to administer second doses to our community. While the state will no longer be providing the town with additional first doses, our partnership with Brewster Ambulance will continue in order to reach more of our elderly residents and provide a simple and safe option for vaccination. As we continue to vaccinate our residents and reopen local businesses, we cannot forget the drastic ways our community was impacted by the virus affecting some of us in the most unimaginable ways. At this time, I would like to take a moment to pause and ask that you join me in a moment of silence to remember the 132 residents from Braintree whose lives were lost to the coronavirus over the last year. I offer my deepest sympathy and condolences to their families and friends. Their memory will be eternal in Braintree. Thank you. I could not reflect on the past year without recognizing those that have remained on the front lines serving our community without hesitation. On behalf of the Town of Braintree, I want to thank the men and women of the Braintree Police Department, the Braintree Fire Department, the Braintree Health Department, Brewster Ambulance, and all our healthcare workers for your unwavering commitment to the health and safety of our community. You continue to answer the call for service for our residents, even in times of great uncertainty, without question. Thank you for all you do to keep our community safe. I must also take this opportunity to thank our Department of Public Works, whose staff has continued to work throughout the pandemic. Thanks to their efforts, we were able to resurface and repave in the town's roadway and infrastructure program, which started, which will start back up in the spring. The facilities department continues to take on new projects to help beautify our buildings. Most recently include the exterior restoration of the American Legion and a complete interior renovation of the Doherty Gym. DPW crews maintain our public parks and open spaces on a daily basis. And during winter storms, they are the ones who keep our roads and sidewalks safe and accessible during these events, often going unrecognized. The DPW team is an asset to our municipal operations and to our community for their steadfast commitment. I say thank you. I would also like to recognize the hard work and dedication of the Braintree Electric Light Department staff. During the pandemic, they continued to do their work to maintain power and internet services. The reliability of BELD was steadfast during a time when we needed it most. They worked through some of the most treacherous weather in 2020 to maintain our power source and keep us safe. Thank you for your commitment to our community, Braintree Electric Light Department employees. It is also important to recognize our Braintree Public School Administration and staff. From our cafeteria staff, who provided breakfast and lunch to go when schools were closed for in-person learning, to the administration who ensured that all students had the necessary access to technology for remote learning, to our teachers who swiftly adapted their lesson plans to accommodate virtual learning. Our school department remained committed to providing our youth with the highest quality of education during this most difficult time. Also, I would be remiss if I did not recognize our parents 
who continue to advocate for our young people and work with the administration to achieve our goal of full in-person learning before the end of the school year. Our Brantree High School students will return to Brantree High five full days a week on March 15th with grades K through eight following suit in April. I began my term with a tour of all of our schools from boiler rooms to rooftops. And it was clear that our infrastructure was in great need of repair. To that end, I proposed a, I proposed a debt exclusion to fund a new South Middle School roof replacements, security enhancements, and a feasibility study for Brantree High School. The vote originally scheduled for March 2020 was held on September 26th. In a showing of overwhelming support, Braintree voters approved all four question, questions and voiced their commitment to the future of our children and community as a whole, loud and clear. We were also able to secure $31 million in funding from the Massachusetts School Building Authority and have continued our partnership to design and build a new South Middle School by the fall of 2023. We will open the doors to our fifth through eighth grade students, offering a state-of-the-art educational facility. This will be Braintree's first new school built since the early 1970s. Another step forward in enhancing our town's infrastructure in future can be found in my decision to create a master plan. The last master plan for the town was completed in 1998. Since then, we've experienced growth in almost every sector, including residential, commercial, institutional, and nonprofits. I heard the requests of, the com of our community, including residents and elected officials, that we must take this next step to provide a framework for our future and have funded the establishment of a master plan. The master plan steering committee made up of residents, business owners and elected officials will soon begin its work to develop this important blueprint for our continued growth and I look forward to continuing on the best path forward. East Brantree will be home to new growth with the sale of land at 44 Allen Street to the Wynn Development Company. The $15.4 million proposed development will create a community with 44 units of mixed income housing, extend the Monadequate Riverwalk, building a 20 foot wide wood walkway linking Allen Street on the east to the Starling Boat Company on the west. Restore a wetland habitat along the eastern portion of the site and open up more public access to the waterfront along Allen Street and create 54,000 square feet of open space on the property. With 25% of the units reserved for workforce and middle income house, households located in a transit friendly location, this property will enhance our existing housing portfolio and move us closer to our goals of affordability. Another example of our continued growth can be found in the redevelopment of the land located at the intersection of Liberty and Grove Streets. Through collaboration between the developer, planning and community development, and my office, we were able to successfully rezone this land and ensure its redevelopment in a responsible manner that is appropriate in use, scale, and character for the location. At the same time, we were able to use Community Preservation Act funds to preserve the oldest house in Braintree and maintain more than half of the property in its current vegetative state. 
In the coming year, we will see the continued redevelopment of this property, further enhancing the commercial services available in the area. Braintree has a wealth of resources to offer to new businesses and commercial growth. When you compare location and accessibility, commercial tax rates, per capita income of res residents, local water supply, electric rates, our community is un undoubtedly the best place to establish a business in the region and has all of the amenities necessary to operate successfully. Over the next year, I am committed to continuing to bring new commercial redevelopment to Braintree with a specific focus on attracting life sciences to our community. New growth is an essential part of our revenue stream while also improving the quality of life for our residents. It is time to remind commercial development that Braintree means business and we have every necessary, everything necessary to operate successfully. Now, I cannot talk about development in business without addressing our small business community. The last year has been exceptionally difficult for our small business owners. And I want you to know that Braintree is here for you. As a past small business owner for 29 years, I know firsthand that there is no way to anticipate the impact COVID-19 would have on your operations for some business will never be the same. As part of the town's efforts to support your continued operations, we are currently offering local businesses that have been neg negatively impacted by COVID-19 with financial assistance through a community development block grant. The town has a total of $320,000 to award to local businesses to be used towards rent, mortgage payments, payroll, utilities, personal protective equipment, and costs for adapting to operations during the pandemic. Our small businesses are an essential part of our community, and we will continue to offer you our full support in every way possible. The effects of coronavirus felt over the last year have been widespread and in some cases have been devastating, leaving our community to rebuild in the aftermath for years to come. The financial impacts of layoffs, reduced operating capacities and business closures across industries have been felt by many and have unequivocally put the finances of the town to the greatest test. Even during our worst recessions, never did we see the town see across the board financial impacts. 2020 was a year of needs, not wants, for our town departments. And 2021 will require an even greater show of conservative fiscal management as we begin to reestablish our resources and explore all available funding sources. This will be no easy task, but I can promise you one thing, that our residents will not suffer any loss of services provided by the town during this period of reconstruction. Before concluding, I cannot look back on 2020 without recognizing the support the community has received from Senator Elizabeth Warren, Senator Ed Markey, Congressman Stephen Lynch, Representative Mark Cusack, Senator Walter Timothy, and Senator John Keenan. Thank you all for being strong advocates for the town of Braintree. I truly appreciate all that you have done for our residents and look forward to continuing our great work together in support of our community.
finally, to the residents of Brantree. You are the foundation of our community and an essential part of our continued success. No matter what the new year brings, you have my commitment that I will continue to serve as your advocate as we continue to prosper in years ahead. I am proud to call Brantree my home and more importantly, most proud to serve as your mayor. Thank you.